Hello and welcome to the third video in our video series on the principles of orthographic projection. So in this video here we're going to look at three different methods for connecting each of our orthographic views together. So to start with we're just going to look at an animation from the last video in our series and that's our video where we take our projections of our various views, our front elevation, our plan view and our two end views he here left and right and we fold out the object. So you can see we take each of our projections and if you remember we pr fold them out off of our vertical plane giving us a 2D representation of this folded out, these folded out planes. And that's what we see on our drawing sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, our 3D object here and we're going to see why do we need to have our views connected. So the probably the easiest way to describe it is if you look at our object like so this object is sitting on the horizontal plane, so it's sitting on the ground. If we look at our various views, our front elevation and our end view, well, we want to have our object represented so that it's sitting on the ground in both those views. Um, you can see in our front elevation, it's sitting on this line here, representing the ground. We can see in our end view, it's sitting on this line here, representing the ground. Quite simply, it doesn't make sense for our object to be sitting on the ground in our front elevation and not doing it in our end view. And from the point of view of convenience, it makes sense that we should be able to take the height of our object from our front elevation and bring it straight across and mark out the height in our end view. It's exactly the same thing when it comes to our object and its distance away from the vertical plane, what I like to call the back wall. If you look at the plan view here, here we can see the distance between our object and the back wall like that. So um, just for to give it a figure, we're going to say it's 20 millimeters, which is a quite a convenient figure um, to put on your own drawing sheets. So if we say that the object is 20 millimeters out from the back wall, as seen in the plan view, well, it should be the same in our end view here. So there's our 20 millimeters there like so. So this edge here should be 20 millimeters out from um, this line here, my YY line. Um, so that means that when we fold out the object, you can see and our 2D version, this distance here, that's our 20 millimeters here, that should be the same as our distance here. Same thing applies, our height here should be able to be taken straight across um, to our height over here. And that saves us having to re-measure in this, these side views. We can transfer from our plan view our widths and give us the widths in, a, in our end view and we should be able to transfer the height straight across from our front elevation. So we're going to look at our three ways that we uh, go about doing this. If you remember from the last video, when we fold out our planes, we represented that in our 2D view by a series of arcs. So just putting in the plane on our YY line here, we were able to transfer our image onto the plane in elevation, do the same in our plan view, and then we use our compass to swing these arcs representing the plane folding out. So the point of our compass is here, and we just swing our arcs like so. And that has the effect then of transferring the widths from our plan view. So there's the width of our piece, there's the width of our piece here. There's a distance away from the vertical plane in plan view, and there it is transferred across here. So that's our folding out. So that's probably the easiest to recognize way of folding it out. It's probably the best representation of folding it out. Um, it's the same on the opposite side. Again, transferring onto the plane, and then using our arcs with our compass to transfer our widths and using our set square to transfer our heights across. Um, now, while this is a very good way to represent what's actually happening, the only thing about this method is that it can be quite slow. Setting your compass can take quite a bit of time, particularly if it's not a good compass, you might lose some accuracy for that. So it's not really the best way to transfer your distances. While it is, ac while, while it is a good representation, it's in practice, it can be a bit slow. So the second method that we have then is basically working on that idea, but just making it a little bit easier to be more accurate. Um, same approach, we have our direction, object, and plane. Same thing as applied before, we're projecting onto our plane. But this time we take our set square, we take our 45 degree set square, and we draw in a line instead of the arc. So the 45 degree line replaces the arc for transferring our widths across. We transfer our heights straight across, and that gives us our view. So a 45 degree line means that um, this distance here is going to be the same as this distance here. Likewise, the width of our piece is going to be the same as the width of our piece. 
and it's the same on when looking in from the left hand side it's the same looking in from the right hand side and um, again we take our set square we just flip it over and we're able to draw in our 45 degree lines connecting our various views together so that gives us our second end view and that is a little bit quicker than using our compass and it's a little bit more accurate as well so that gives us our second view and just a mention about our 45 degree set square here giving us our 45 degree lines if you use a different set square so like your 60 30 set square what's going to happen is it's going to distort the image so here's a 60 degree set square you, you used in exactly the same way but you can see the image that we get at the end is actually narrower than what it should be same way the distance out from the wall here is narrower than what it should be so that is incorrect so be careful with which set square that you use and um, just as well to show you if you happens if you use a 30 degree angle you can see that's going to give us an image of an object that's wider so it stretches or distorts the image which is not what we want for our autographic we want to have it represented as exactly as it is on the object itself so that's what happens so make sure you use a 45 degree set square Okay, to finish off then we're going to look at the last method so this is my preferred method I think this is probably the quickest way to transfer from one view to the other the approach is exactly the same only instead of using projecting onto the plane and going up individually at 45 degrees we draw one single 45 degree line and we just project straight onto it and straight up so it's very very quick straight across then for our heights giving us our end view same thing applies looking in from the right hand side we transfer we sw uh, swap over our set squares giving one single 45 degree line we just come across and up and there we have our uh, heights transferred and again it has to be a 45 degree line but this is my preferred method and um, for the simple reason is it means that we only have to go straight across and straight up we don't have to go across and then up individually at a 45 degree line so it actually results in a third less lines transferring our views so which means that you can be quicker doing it it means that you can spend more time at being more accurate um, in your drawing so this is our third method then for connecting our views um, as always um, I hope this is of some benefit to you and stay tuned to the rest of the videos for more information thank you very much